Hey, I'm Chris. Hi, I'm Ryan, and welcome to Inside and HUD. Now, there are over a thousand basketball tournaments every single season in New York State, but, but we have one here at HUD that's very special to us, the Jack McGuire Tournament. Now, Jack McGuire was a classmate of many of ours when we were younger who passed away tragically to leukemia. Now, every year, we all get together to celebrate his life and also to celebrate his love for basketball in the annual tournament. Um, I got the chance to catch a couple comments from Mr. and Mrs. McGuire and a couple of the players and the coaches. I'm here with varsity basketball coach Jordan Hirsch. Now, coach, we want to ask you, uh, you know, what, are you, what are your thoughts on tonight so far? Uh, it's been a great night. We're really happy that our community is involved in this whole thing and, and to honor Jack uh, and his family playing a great team in Valhalla. And, and uh, hopefully we just have a good show tonight and play hard. Very excited to see you guys play. Anyone we should be looking for any highlights from tonight? Yeah, I mean, I think I'm pretty confident in all our guys. I feel uh, pretty strongly that we have a pretty deep bench. Anybody that goes in there is capable of uh, making a highlight play. What are the emotions running through you right now? This is very emotional for many people. Uh, you know, uh, the McGuire's are very good family friends of ours. I don't know that all of it's really sunk in quite yet, but I'm um, just trying to keep a good head and go into the game knowing that uh, a lot to play for tonight. And um, you know, we're just excited to do it. I'm here with guard Jeremy Morris in the Varsity Boys basketball locker room. Now, Jeremy, tell me, what are your emotions going through you right now about this game tonight? I mean, our emotions are high. It's a huge game. It's the same exact team we lost to last year on a buzzer beater in this tournament, and the goal is just to win. I mean, and you know, me and you both knew Jack, and he loved basketball more than anything. What a great way to remember him, right? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, the community's all involved. It's a huge thing with his family, Coach Hirsch. Everyone's involved, and it's awesome. All right, we look forward to seeing you play tonight. Good luck, man, and uh, thank you. Thank you. I'm here with Mr. and Mrs. McGuire. Now, I know this is a very emotional night for you guys. What are your thoughts so far? Um, well, we're really happy to be here, Ryan. You know, um, it's a very humbling evening for us. Jack loved basketball, as you know. And, um, you know, we're really honored to see all his friends, his classmates, and the community just come together for us again. And Mr. McGuire, I mean, you helped install this beautiful locker room. Now, this is just fantastic. I mean, I personally want to thank you for restoring some pride to our school. Um, especially in the basketball program. Jack would have been your senior this year. I mean, what are your, what are your thoughts on tonight so far? Uh, again, uh, as my wife said, Jan, uh, we are humbled and we, uh, we're thankful that every year since this tournament was renamed for him, uh, we've had a great turnout and it seems a little bit more this year with his senior year. And uh, uh, we, we were happy to help with the locker room, installing it and, and, and getting it in place. It's, uh, it's a great tribute. Fantastic. Now, what a great night to, to watch some great basketball and also see some great community support. I want to thank you guys for doing an interview with me, taking your time. Thank you very much. And back to you in the studio. What an emotional game that was. I mean, it was a great win because it was the first win in history when Jack would have been a senior. So, I mean, absolutely. You know, what a great way to celebrate Jack's not only love for basketball, but his life in general. It really was. Now, this is not the only celebration that was occurring. Miles away in Ithaca, the duo of Emily Sullivan and Lauren Siegel was occurring at the New York State Girls Swimming Championship. I got a chance to catch up with them in the Hall of Fame, and let's see if they had the stroke of good luck. So congratulations, girls. How did it feel to go out to the championship for your first time? It was so exciting. I was just, it's such an honor to be part of such a big team and to actually participate in the team. I can imagine now, you're more of a natural of it. It's your second time up there. How was that? It was awesome because I already knew the experience and then I had Lauren by my side, which was even more fun. Gotcha. Now, how do you actually qualify to go to the championship? So you have to qualify individually, so it means like it's yourself. So it doesn't matter if the whole team goes or one or two girls go. If you make the time that you need, then you can go. So gotcha. That's now the big question that everyone wants to know, how did you guys actually do? We did amazing and we both got personal best times in our events and we qualified for finals, which means we're the top 30 girls in the state. That's awesome. Now, where do you see this going after this? Um, well, eventually I think both of us want to swim in college and just take it further into a higher level. We also would hopefully try and make it into A finals, so top 10 girls of the states next year. So what was most exciting about your experience? Well, probably after I swam, it was really exciting and a little nerve-wracking to see if I was going to make it into the top 30 and stay another day because everyone is so close at this level that you don't know. Like, it could be a tenth of a second. You're not really sure. So I was just really excited once I found out that I was in the top 30 and I could stay that extra night and just bond with, like, the girls who were going to swim the next day. And it was just really awesome. So being only a sophomore and a two-year qualifier, there must be a couple of things you're hiding from us. 
Um, well, most people don't know that the school has records for swimming, and I hold multiple of them, including Lauren does too. And Lauren and I both qualified for sectionals, which is in Florida this year, and it's the Eastern competition for all swimmers, and we're very excited to keep, compete in that because it's a great accomplishment. Well, that's awesome. Well, thanks so much. Congratulations on the big accomplishment, and our school will be watching out for you too. You know, what an amazing accomplishment. They're only sophomores. Yeah, well, that means they have two more potential years to qualify for states. Now, when we come back, talking about states, we had two other girls in the music department that qualified, Cassandra and Katie. Which one do you want? I think we'll have a hen hood yearbook. Hi, I'm Morgan. Our next story features hen hood's amazing music program. I got the opportunity to take a look into the holiday choir concert. I got to catch up with Mrs. Denler, the head of the choir, as well as Cassie Cavalier and Katie Johnson, who made it all the way to the state level. I'm here with Mrs. Denler, head of the hen hood chorus. So, congrats on having another state qualifier this year. Thank you very much. Katie Johnson qualified for all state chorus. Uh, this is a fantastic experience. We have students go every single year. For the past, I want to say, seven or eight years, it's a great opportunity for Hen Hud to be represented in the state amongst some of the best singers in the entire state. We're really, really proud of Katie. Last night's concert was fantastic. We had uh, three great choirs perform and lots of other soloists. Uh, Katie was one of them. And they all, I'm so thrilled to be able to highlight the solo voices. I love that we do a wide variety of styles of music. One of the highlights of the evening for me was Psalm 23, where we had an oboist and a flautist accompany us in a, in a very moving, lovely, extremely difficult piece. The concert was very enjoyable. We had a great crowd with lots of volunteers helping out, and I look forward to uh, the next performance here at Hendrick Hudson High School. That's awesome. Thanks so much. Happy holidays. Thank you. I'm here with Cassandra Cavallari and Katie Johnson. Congrats guys on making Allstate. So how did it feel when you found out you made Allstate? I was very happy and I have to say I was not expecting to get in because of my score. How about you? Um, I was also not really expecting to get in um, but I got a better score than I thought I would, and I'm so grateful that I was able to go up for the experience. And how long have you been playing the bassoon for? Um, I've been playing for five years now. And have you seen, um, received any honors for this? Um, I have done all county, area all state, now all state, and then in April I'll be going up to Providence, Rhode Island with Jody Scharf um, for All Eastern. You guys are the first two students from Hen Hud, right? Yeah. That's awesome. So what would you say makes Hen Hud's music program so great? Well, I think that um, Mrs. Denler and Mr. Akers both take a lot of time out of their schedules to help kids who they know can really do well at, um, at Allstate and at Area Allstate, um, all the events that they can do during the year. Um, and they really do a good job of preparing everyone. And I think that's why we've had so many kids in the past few years represent Hen Hud at Allstate. Mm -hmm. And Katie, so when did you start singing and do you have any future plans in singing? Well, I've been singing since forever basically and yes I do hope to pursue singing in college I would like to be a vocal performance minor at least maybe a major well thanks for talking to us guys you know I had a chance to attend that as well and wow absolutely amazing but you know while we're on the topic of something being amazing the art department in this school is absolutely fantastic now recently we had the art honor society induction and I had a chance to catch a couple of comments from Mrs. Nash and a couple of her inductees I'm here with Art Honor Society advisor, Mrs. Nash. Now, Mrs. Nash, can you tell us a little bit about Art Honor Society and a little bit about the ceremony as well? Um, well, I started it about six years ago, and there was Art Club before that, and I wanted to up the ante a little bit, get kids really involved, and it's bloomed into almost 20 to 30 members every year, and we do community service art projects and personal projects. The kids get to do kind of what they want to do outside of regular school art class. So. Awesome, and can you tell us a little bit about the induction ceremony? Yeah, the induction ceremony we do in the library, so it's a little more personal, and um, the old members come and we have a little art show too, so everybody gets to put their own personal work in it, and then during the show families get to see it, so it's a really great, not just ceremony, but art show and experience for the new members to see what other people have done. Awesome, and my final question, what, what kind of qualifications do you need to be in Art Honor Society? 
Um, you need to have uh, at least be average. You need to have taken an art class. You need to commit to at least one meeting a month, and you need to do community service. So. Fantastic. Well, you heard it here, folks. Thank you very much, Mrs. Ness. So, how many years have you been in our honor society? Um, since my sophomore year, so that's about three years. What type of art do you think would be your concentration? Well, I really like painting horses in acrylic paint. I've been riding since I was 12 years old, so I feel like I can express myself through the brush strokes, and I feel like I can really connect to horses. So what are your future plans with art? Do you, do you look to find a career in this? Yeah, um, I actually want to go to school for illustration. As a matter of fact, one of the pieces that I did for the show for our Honor Society was a piece with rabbits that I did in pencil. So what would be any future advice you might have for anyone joining our Honor Society? Um, stay creative. Uh, don't be afraid to paint what you want. Fantastic. Thank you very much. The artwork displayed around school is truly amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I can completely agree. Mm -hmm. And when we come back, we'll be taking a look into a course that helps seniors prepare for college. A popular course taking over the senior class this year is College Transition, taught by Mrs. Rogolsky. Here's a little bit about that. I'm Mrs. Rogolsky. I have been working here at Hinhead for 12 years, and this is the 10th year that College Transition is running. I created this course, and the overall goal really is to help students choose colleges that they feel comfortable and excited to apply to, write the essay, and then we talk about everything from how to deal with roommates and how to set up boundaries and rules and and routine to scheduling and we create a mock schedule of their first semester courses and we go through syllabi and we highlight and review how to use the syllabi as your you know and all the goals guide to being successful as a student in college and taking ownership of this this process that you know while it's overwhelming it, it really is it's awesome. So I created a new experience this year in which I reached out to my colleagues and I asked if they would like to share their journey of how they navigated college, how they decided on their major, and how ultimately they wound up working here at HUD. And so I was overwhelmed by the responses that I received, and they were excited to share their story. And I, I think it's an important opportunity for our students to see all of the different paths that each of us really had to take to get here. At the same time, you know, we all have this college process in common, and we all had to make different, sometimes difficult decisions that led us here. But it's so amazing for them to see how each of us kind of took advantage of different opportunities. And when I watch the students listen to the different stories, they're engaged, they're excited. I mean, the staff members were excited, but the students are even more excited to have the opportunity to ask us real life questions. You know, they, they want to know if if it was difficult picking a major, how we actually knew that this was for us, um, at what age did we enter this field, if we weren't teaching, what would we do? It's just been a wonderful experience. You know, I personally didn't take that class, but a couple of my friends did, and I really feel like they had that edge over me in the rigorous college process. Yeah, college applications are definitely stressful, and being prepared definitely helps. Mm -hmm. And for the upcoming year, we will be presenting these stories about students attending programs outside of Penhud, such as the New Vision Environmental Science Program at T-Town, to Carnegie Hall, and to Westchester Broadway Theater. You know, it's funny, because she said outside of Penhud, and we're doing inside Penhud right now. But anyway, let's get back to business, and our teacher feature for this month is on Scott Perlman. Hi, I'm Scott Perlman, health educator at Hendrick Hudson High School, uh, Montrose, New York. I've been here for 12 years. I think ultimately what I like about not just teaching but what about the career that I've chosen in relation to health is that it's an applicable skill and knowledge base that kids can use immediately. In my time here, we've done documentaries, we've done HIV testing in the school, we became the only high school in the United States to have optional HIV testing. All these things that we have done here, and I never want to say I have done here because there's no way that I could have done any of this, but all the things that we have done here have made my career so fulfilling and so exciting. My other huge passion is being a member of the Alternative Academy. and. 
Nobody knows everything about the Alternative Academy. And it was a vision that had started uh, several principles ago that they wanted to create an outstanding learning environment with students that were in some way, shape, or form not succeeding in your regular classroom setting. The current staff we have now is loving and supportive and sweet. The passion that they bring, the sheer amazement that they create in a classroom. They get kids excited about learning. We create a family environment upstairs. We have Thanksgiving and we do trips and all these things are designed to make kids fall in love with learning and the actual process and being here. I have found that I have enough energy at the end of the day that I want to do other things. So. Originally, I started a peer aids education program, and several years after that, I was approached by a student to start a GSA, Gay Straight Alliance. That has become one of my biggest passions after school, is to work with kids, not only who identify as gay, straight, bi, it does not matter. Anybody and everybody is welcome to come in, and it's a safe place to have conversations and to be connected to people in the school that you might not ever, ever, ever meet. The other thing I do is I also work at North Shore University Hospital, so I'm an AIDS educator. I want my kids to fall in love with themselves more than anything, and I want to get that across every single day. And for me, knowing that I have given them a solid foundation and given them everything that I got to give them courage and strength to make the decisions that are for them, that's probably the best part of my job and why I love teaching. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Inside Hen Hud. I'm Morgan. I'm Ryan. And I'm Chris, and have a great holiday season.